This isn't the Heat series. We can't start back. You have to start up, especially if they setting it so high. You start up and drop because we're chasing. Now he goes down. Marcus Smart is right. It certainly is not the Heat series. But what exactly was Marcus Smart talking about? What was Marcus Smart so fired up about being wired up in the microphone in the huddle at this particular moment? What Marcus Smart is talking about is the Celtics pick and roll defense, particularly their drop coverage and what needed to change. Let's break it down. Welcome back to the NBA break room. Coach Logan here, and let's break down how coaching adjustments made all the difference for the Celtics in game one, particularly their decision to switch their pick and roll coverage and go small in the fourth quarter. In this clip here, you're gonna see Andrew Wiggins setting a ball screen for Marcus Smart. Robert Williams drew the assignment of Andrew Wiggins, and I think they did this because they wanted to avoid Robert Williams in as much pick and roll action as possible. We know Robert Williams, second team, all defense, very versatile, very athletic, but his knee has been bothering him. It's very clear he's not 100%, and the Warriors look to exploit this. So in this first clip here, Steph Curry coming off of this screen, and you're gonna see right away, look how far off Robert Williams is. This is called drop coverage. And this is what Marcus Smart was so fired up about. In the Heat series, they were able to drop this far back because the Heat did not have the shooters that the Warriors have. However, against Steph Curry, you're gonna have to be up much further than Robert Williams is in this clip. This gives Steph Curry all the time in the world to step up into a shot. In this second clip here, you're gonna have Looney setting a high screen at the half court line or Marcus Smart. Marcus Smart actually communicates the switch. If you guys saw his hand went up, he's telling Tatum to switch, but it's a miscommunication. Tatum decides to leave the ball. You cannot leave Steph Curry past the half court line with the ball because he's able to pull up from anywhere. And this is just way too much space to give the greatest shooter of all time. And he knocks it down. Take a look at Marcus Smart visibly upset with Tatum because of the miscommunication. This clip here is another example. All of this happening in the first quarter miscommunication Marcus Smart here he's expecting a switch with Jalen Brown this is obvious by the fact that Marcus Smart decides to go under this screen he's expecting Jalen Brown to step up and he doesn't once again take a look at Smart visibly upset with Brown and the missed assignment this clip here is just inexcusable you're gonna have Jordan Poole setting a screen on Steph Curry take a look at Derek White and Peyton Pritchard as they both decide to go with the cutting Jordan Poole once again, leaving Steph Curry wide open with all day to shoot. Best shooter of all time. You can't let that happen. Now we see Jason Tatum guarding Steph Curry. And you're going to see Daniel Tice putting screen and roll. Once again, drop coverage going wrong. You have to be up much higher. You're dropping while Steph is at the three-point line. It's going to be an open shot and it's going to be a make. An unintended consequence of the miscommunications is what you see on this possession here. Anytime you're guarding the ball in screen and roll, you're forcing him to the help. And the way the Celtics are playing defense, the help is on the other side of this screen. But we saw in the first quarter so many miscommunications. Marcus Smart being left on an island, and he decides to jump this screen, right? He's overplaying the screen here because he's not 100% sure he's going to have that help. And now that puts him in a bad spot, and he gives up an open shot. Early in the third quarter here, Celtics yet to adjust. Marcus Smart is telling him the screen's coming. The screen's coming right there. He's communicating to Robert Williams that the screen is coming. Robert Williams is playing in drop still too far off for Steph Curry, and he knocks it down. And now we start to see the adjustments. Now we start to see the Celtics fix their mistake. Take a look at this possession here. Look how much higher up Robert Williams is already playing. Well above the three-point line. And it discourages Curry from going that way, right? Again, he's staying high up, high up. Take a look at the difference here. Now he's able to actually contest and he gets a block shot. Take a look here in this clip. You have the high screen. He actually switched sides on the screen, which puts Horford in a tough spot here. But Horford is athletic enough. He's able to recover and force Steph to change directions. It's not always about, you know, shutting a guy down. It's making it tough. Like, look how much harder Steph Curry had to work on this possession because... Al Horford is playing high, makes him change directions, forces a step back. Still an open shot, but he made him work for it. You see it again here on this clip. Looney setting the screen. Take a look at how much higher Al Horford is. That's going to take away the three-point shot. White is also able to easily get over the top of that screen. Yes, he makes a tough basket. Yes, they get two points. But again, you can't shut down a Steph Curry. You just got to make him work for it. And early in the game, they weren't doing that in their drop coverage. They made the adjustment, and it was much harder for Steph Curry to get looks. 
Again, we have Looney setting the ball screen. Look how high Horford is, right? Playing much higher, playing much higher. Now Curry's not able to get the three, forces a tough shot in the lane. Going small was also huge, not only for the defense and having Horford be the defender in those pick and rolls, but also offensively. The Celtics are at their best when they can drive and kick. So when Horford is playing the five, look what it does to Looney. It pulls Looney away from the basket because the Celtics play five out. This gives space for Jalen Brown to able to penetrate, get in the lane. Look how much attention he's drawing. You got three defenders in the lane. Easy kick out to Derek White, who knocks down the shot. Here's another example. Take a look. Looney, because of the transition, has to guard Derek White. Easy for Derek White to break him off the bounce. And now look how much help you've drawn. You got two guys in the lane. You got Wiggins having to drop down. And now Clay's in a position where he's got to try to help on these two. Wiggins has to help on these two. Very tough for the defense. You get a kick to the corner. You're going to get the one more. And look where Looney is. All the way in the paint. Nobody guarding Horford. Clay's in a position where he has to guard two. He has to stunt on Al Horford. Horford could have kicked it one more and gotten an even more open shot. But he decides to take it and he knocks it down. Without Robert Williams in the game and Horford at the five, they're more athletic, which means they can run more. Take a look at Looney on this play. It's his instinct as a big, you run back to the paint. The only problem is with a guy like Horford, who can stretch the floor and knock down the shot, he can trail and stay out on the perimeter, and now Looney's in no position to be able to defend that shot. More unintended consequences, right? The Warriors have to take Looney out of the game. Looney cannot guard Horford out on the perimeter. Looney's a rim protector, and if you're taken away from the rim, you kind of lose your value, you lose your impact. So now, the Warriors are forced to go small. Take a look what happens. Now Horford is able to go up over the top, get the offensive rebound, kick out to an open three, and that's kind of the dagger of the game. The decision for the Boston Celtics to go small along with their adjustments and pick and roll defense were the difference in this game. Let me know what you guys think. Sound off in the comment section below. What do you think was the biggest difference in game one? And who do you got winning game two? If you like the video, don't forget to like the video. Subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys on the next one. This is the NBA Break Room. Peace.